Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is David Baker. Now he is an entrepreneur. He is listed in who's who in industry and finance, who's who in America, and who's who in the world. Welcome, David. Well, uh, thank you for having me. You know, it's so wonderful to have you back in the chair again, because I know that we're going to have an in-depth discussion mm -hmm. about something important because yeah. it always is every time you come and grace my show. Thank you so much. Well, you're more than welcome. Now, the subject that we're going to work on is taxes. Um, what our tax system is about, is it good? Is it not good? <laughs> Should it be changed? Should we abolish it altogether? It, it, it's a lot of political talk right mm -hmm. now. And, yes. it, and it kind of rolls around maybe every decade, somebody squawks a little bit about it, but you don't see, you, t you hear talk, but you don't see real defined plans that, that come out that get to the public eye, you know, for, for good scrutiny and for, for real, real true conversation. So that's what I'm hoping to have today is get a, some history of our tax code and then where, you, where your research has kind of brought you to what could be done. Sure. Well, the, the tax code, the present tax code, dates back to 1913. Uh, that was the same year that the uh, uh, Federal Reserve Act was passed. Mm -hmm. And although the tax was uh, promoted as a way of reducing the, the cost of imported goods, uh, so it was actually thought of as a tax reduction plan, mm -hmm. it was, uh, when it was debated, uh, uh, the Congress was led to believe that it would not touch one hair on the working man's head, that this was a, a tax the rich thing. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, uh, a family of four might make five or six hundred dollars a year. The tax didn't kick in until I think it was five thousand dollars. or So it wouldn't have affected them. However, uh, like most, uh, most taxes, uh, the rates grew and the, uh, because of inflation, more people were brought under the tax. And it really wasn't until the uh, uh, beginning of the Second World War that the, the tax really started to, to hit the, the working class. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, uh, then referred to as the victory tax, and it was looked at as a temporary measure uh, that was going to last a couple of years to pay for the war. And of course, like all temporary government programs, it's continued to this day. Well, I, I, well it also mm -hmm. fed a lot. I mean, a, a lot of yeah. money must have mm -hmm. come in because of it. And somebody yeah. said, hey, this is a good way of having revenue. Sure. Well, actually, uh, I would guess. the real purpose of the tax, we think it's to run the government. The real purpose of the tax, is, well, it has several. One is social engineering, because if you want less of something, you tax it. And if you want more of it, you exempt it or give a incentive. Or, yeah. uh, uh, so it was used for social engineering, but the money part of it was, was used not to run the country, but to pay the interest to the Federal Reserve for the money that they create out of thin air. To pay for the war? Uh, no, no. Oh. To pay the Federal Reserve for the privilege of using their notes instead of the lawful United States notes that Congress has the authority to, to create. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Congress abdicated that authority, which they had no authority to do, mm -hmm. uh, to a private banking cartel, which is the Federal Reserve. And when was that? 1913. 1913. Okay, so there was this yeah. switch so, of kind of who controlled yeah. the money mm -hmm. and what you did with it. Now, when the government, so the government doesn't use bonds to raise money like the states do? The government just raises taxes? Well, no, there's government bonds too. Because uh, why wouldn't the bonds have then paid for the war as well, opposed to going to this victory tax? Well, they, tax? they, they did have a big bond drive. Uh, they had Don, Donald Duck out promoting buying bonds and and actually, they used Donald Duck to promote the income tax. Saying, really? Yeah, saying oh, we need more taxes to fight the axis. <laughs> that rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, ho however, the uh, uh, the tax is actually counterproductive. It may cost more to collect the tax than what we would benefit from it. 
And because you because you end up building a bureaucracy around getting the tax, sure. keeping the laws, sure. adding more laws. Yep. So the money that you're paying for taxes ends up paying for administration of taxes, meaning yep. less goes yep. directly sure. where it needs to sure. go to. Well, just in, in complying, you're looking at at hundreds of, of billions of dollars a year just in compliant costs for companies. Uh, you have outfits like H&R Block, I think uh, their sales are over a billion dollars a year, just that one entity alone. You have a lot of record keeping that wouldn't be necessary uh, in normal business pursuits, mm -hmm. but is necessary for tax purposes. Because the, ta because the laws are so are written in a way that yep. they're just so complicated? Well, well that and, and uh, and other reasons, but the uh, uh, the complexity of the uh, the code is such that that you have people like former Commissioner Shirley Peterson referring to the code as an impenetrable maze, not even understood by tax professionals or the government employees in charge of its administration. I think so she's trying to say it's too big. <laughs> that's pretty, you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there is a thing in law called the void for vagrants doctrine. If a law is so vague that no one can understand it, that it's not a law. Oh. But uh, uh, doesn't apply to the tax. Well, uh, I don't think they they buy that excuse. But <laughs> but the uh, 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 well, I actually will show you the tax code. This is uh, this is what we're mm -hmm. supposed to comply with. This is the law. Okay. They say that ignorance of the law is no excuse. So we're supposed to know the law. And One, two, three, four, five, well, six. Well, this is actually the this one on top is the code. Okay. okay. And and this uh, this is its most condensed form. The paper in here is so thin that you can see the print on the other side. Okay. So and the print is extremely small. Yes, it looks to be very small. Now they do have another version. Another company puts out the code. It's the same words, but it's in two volumes uh, with bigger print, mm -hmm. and they're hardbound. And but then now you've got twice as much bulk. Right, and, and uh, this a new one comes out every year. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because they can make changes. That's right. Yeah, and and uh, uh, the code is written in legalese. It's not written in plain English. English. So if you read the code. You really have to have a copy of Black's Law Dictionary next to you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, you also have to find the definitions of terms that are hidden within the code. Mm -hmm. So, if a word used in the code uh, is given a definition by Congress, that becomes its meaning, not what's in the, lo the Law Dictionary, not what's in Webster's Dictionary, mm -hmm. uh, but whatever Congress says it is, and and that can be fairly confusing because, uh, uh, for instance, uh, husband and wife, we both know what husband and wife is. Mm -hmm. However, there's a definition in the code that says wife shall be read as husband and husband shall be read as wife. I mean, how confusing is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is, why is it even there? Yeah, uh, yeah. And there are numerous things like that. Mm -hmm. And they don't apply through the entire book. Some apply to certain chapters, okay. some apply to certain subtitles, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, in in the code there are several definitions of United States. Right, right. And most of them do not include the fifty states. Uh, <laughs> one of them does. Right. <laughs> and and the narrowest uh, definition I could find uh, was uh, for the for United States uh, applied to only one subparagraph. And it says, for purposes of that subparagraph, the term United States shall mean the continental shelf. Well, that's underwater, right? <laughs> it had to do with offshore drilling. Right. But they didn't want to say that. So, okay. so to mislead, they said United States is hereby imposed a tax on oil wells drilled in the United States. Okay. So somebody in Kansas is probably paying a tax that applies to somebody that's drilling offshore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is it also no. fairly safe to assume that they just revise it and they don't kind of weed out things that don't apply anymore? Well, they, and this is one of the reasons why it's so thick and so big? Sometimes they repeal parts of it and, uh, and uh, sometimes they make additions. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like uh, uh, trying to patch it up as you go along. Right. To, uh, and it's like having an automobile tire 
that was made in 1913. Back then, the tires weren't as good, and if you went 100 miles, you probably would get a, at least one puncture and have to have it repaired. They put mm -hmm. a patch on it. Mm -hmm. Well, so the code is like a 1913 tire that's covered with patches. So now there's more patches than tire. Than, than tire. Now, they say, well, you have to simplify it. Well, if you start pulling the patches off, the thing's going <laughs> to, it's not going to work. It's not you know? So what are the other books that are well, underneath it? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Uh, in the code, up around section 6010, it says that, that we are not only to comply with the code, mm -hmm. but with such rules and regulations as the secretary may from time to time prescribe. Okay. Well, by that they mean the secretary of the treasury. Mm -hmm. uh, he writes the regulations that implement the various sections in the code. So now we not only are supposed to know what's in here, right, but we're supposed to know what the secretary has written for regulations, and there are another, another five volumes. Right? And that gets updated that every are, year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you get five new volumes every year? Well, if you want to keep up to date, you would. And they're expensive. I think this book was $100 when I bought it. And that's written in legalese as well? Oh, yeah. It sure is. <laughs> and then so these you have little, to know your code, all but these you little might not flags, necessarily be able yeah. to understand it. Right. All these little flags are things. When I found something that was particularly misleading, mm -hmm. I'd put a flag on it. Okay. And as you can see... There's a lot of uh, flags. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, very few people have actually read the code. Even, even uh, uh, judges in tax court have never read the code. Yeah. Never mind the re all the regulations. Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, however... Uh, the, the Supreme Court has said that, uh, uh, that if, if a section in the code uh, is challenged, someone challenges it and go to, goes to court, if it makes it to the appellate level mm -hmm. or to the Supreme Court, that that sets a precedence as to the meaning of that section. Okay. So now you have to go by the court ruling. So to make that easier, they've come out with a version of the code in hardcover that uh, is called the Internal Revenue Code Annotated. Mm -hmm. And every time a section has been challenged and what the results were, that's published right after that section. Okay. And of course that takes a lot more space. Mm -hmm. And that version of the code would take up a, a whole wall, you know, in a, in a library. <laughs> yeah. well, well, that's good though, that's yeah. democracy at work. Yeah. I mean, at least you can challenge it. You may yeah. not win, yeah. but you could. So, sure. Yes, it was written in a particular place and time. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, it would appear that as anything, it kind of grows and grows and grows and kind of grows on sure. itself. So it sounds like we have much people often refer to the military complex mm -hmm. and all of the things that feed off that. We have a kind of tax complex sure. and the things that feed off that. So when, when you're sitting down and you're listening to someone saying, we need to reform the tax code. What are they really saying? Are they just saying we need to reform the tax code, which means take out a few things, add a sure. few more things. You know, maybe, if, you know, we're just going to tax the rich. That's our reform. Yeah. Or we're going right. to... Right. Well, or do we need to just, like, go to a flat tax and just call it a day? Well, well, what people really want is for them not to be taxed and someone else to be taxed. Well, that's not In other words, very possible, don't tax you, don't tax me. <laughs> right. Tax the man behind the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What is it? Don't tax you. Don't tax. tax don't tax me. me. Don't tax, tax you. Tax the man behind the tree. Tax the man behind the tree. Okay. And and, uh, uh, and of course you know that that uh, uh, Einstein once said that the most complicated thing in the world is the federal income tax. <laughs> and he's dealt with some very complex matters, but he says nothing. Nothing in the universe compares to. Well, this is also very man-made, yeah. <laughs> so its logic is different. So, so again, when, when people talk about broadening the base, they talk mm -hmm. about taxing yeah. the rich, mm -hmm. you know, these are easy concepts, yes. but, you know, if you're looking at a tax code since 1913, the logic tells you easy, large, they don't fit each other. No. No. So how, how do well, you balance that well, out? Well, you know, we, we pay all types of taxes, not just income tax. That's true, we um, do. And uh, most of the taxes we pay, we don't have to fill out papers. We don't have to sign anything on the penalties of perjury that the right amount was collected. Oh, no, uh, they just tax our cars and yeah. tax our food when, and tax our... When we our... buy gasoline, there's, yeah. a, there's a tax in the price of the gas. 
Mm -hmm. uh, same with alcohol and tobacco. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's uh, uh, a tax that's in our telephone bill. Yes. Presumably to pay for the Spanish-American War. Uh, and another one in the phone bill that pays for the Tennessee Valley Authority. Mm -hmm. to, you know, so, so there are a lot of taxes that we pay and we're not inconvenienced at all. And, and those are federal taxes, because there are state taxes we pay oh, too, but right, now we're, taxes, right too. now we're just talking right. about federal taxes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, okay, so we uh, have a taxation where uh, we're taxed when we consume, sure. mm -hmm. and then we have a taxation with our income. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when, you, when people talk about reform, what are they talking about? Well, are they talking about mainly income, or are they uh, talking about... I think they're probably, when they think of taxes, they're thinking primarily of the income tax. Okay. Uh, unless they're a corporation and they think of corporate taxes. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a misconception that corporations pay taxes. And of course, we know recently we've heard about, about large corporations that paid zero tax in spite of billions of dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and they say, well, uh, we have to close these loopholes and tax them more. But what's not realized is even if the corporation pays uh, uh, corporate taxes, they're not paying taxes because what they do is they pass it on. Mm -hmm. So if you were to tax the automakers an additional hundred dollars for every car that they produced, right, mm -hmm. they would raise the price of the car a hundred dollars. So the working class that goes out to, to buy the automobile pays a hundred dollars more. So it doesn't it so really... So it's a really, it's a tax it's, on everybody yeah. uh, and, or and, everybody who buys. And then they're saying we should tax the rich. And there are some, some very wealthy people that, that pay little or no taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the Rockefellers was uh, being questioned in the, before Congress one time, and they asked him what he had for income last year. And he said $600 million. And they said, well, what did you pay in income tax? Mm -hmm. And he said, nothing. <laughs> so the very wealthy can, can use different, uh, different means, trusts, and, and other entities uh, to... Uh, Avoid. To, to avoid the tax, uh, and uh, so that so that uh, even if they could close those, if you want to call them loopholes, mm -hmm. uh, and somehow tax the rich, uh, there are not enough rich people to make up the gap that we need. That, uh, yeah. uh, it's 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 it was like slavery during the uh, uh, in the, in the days of slavery in this country. Uh, you had the North versus the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were to take all the wealth in the United States at that time and divide it equally amongst all the free men and all the slaves, everyone would have been poor. <laughs> uh, in other words, you cannot make a, uh, a, poor, pers a poor person rich by making a rich person poor. poor. Yeah. And uh, uh, the rich are always an easy target but it's the wealthy that are also uh, the investors, they're the people that build factories, that, are, that employ people. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, they're also uh, uh, some that, that just clip coupons. You know? and, <laughs> <laughs> but, but for the most part, uh, uh, wealthy people, if they're not doing things, uh, investing their money uh, and doing something productive with it, then they're giving it to charities. But, but do they not give it to charities because they then don't have to pay taxes on it? Well, is that not, in a way, another shelter for them well, it, to not? It, because you could set up a charity, sure. pay yourself yeah. money mm -hmm. from it, yeah. we call it a nonprofit, yeah. give sure. that money away, and yeah. everything becomes tax-free. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the upside but, is but the money they give away right. is more, right. it, it doesn't get taxed, mm -hmm. so you actually have more money to give sure. away. But at the same time, now you have these very powerful uh, lobbies or organizations that can funnel money, whether it's sure, that own person's sure. money or somebody yeah. else's money. So yeah. it, and, the, and there's a sense of control because you control well, where the money goes. So well, you're if you still, give money to a university, they might put up a building with your name on it. That's true. And, if and, that's important to you. Yeah. Huh? And, and uh, uh, so there's that, there's that advantage, the mm -hmm. status that would come with, you know, mm -hmm. you have universities like Duke University, Vanderbilt University. Mm -hmm. uh, you have libraries all over the country that, that were started by Carnegie. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But yet mm -hmm. these people were considered robber barons. Yeah. 
and, and maybe some of them were ruthless in their dealings. I don't know because I w you know, wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, so this isn't anything new. No. You know what I mean? The ability to do this isn't anything new. So in a way, does it come down to kind of where the person comes from? I mean, is, it, is there not a kind of psychological game to, I just don't want to pay taxes? Well, no one likes to, you know, people say you have a few rich people uh, saying that they're not taxed enough. There's nothing to prevent them from sending a check to the Treasury. That's true. There's actually a provision where people that want to reduce the national debt can, mm -hmm. can send money. I can send money. But okay. I haven't heard of any of them sending any in. <laughs> any money. So that's interesting. So, yeah. They may say they're not taxed enough. Right. But that's a very small uh, minority. Right. And these yeah. are people that are, that are uh, multi-billionaires. They're not your average mm -hmm. rich person, which today is like, uh, depends on what you mean by rich. Right. That's uh, true, too. Yeah. yeah. That, that's very, very true. Yeah. And, you know, our debt is very large, and the largest proportion of people are not that wealthy. No. So even if you no. taxed all the wealthy, mm -hmm. you're not going to get, like you said, the, the money that you need. So sure. to me, that comes that kind of comes back to changing government, yeah. well, they, changing the system, yeah. not just so that it isolates or supports one particular group. You know, it's not a judgment call because you're rich, you should be taxed more because sure. you're poor, you should be given everything. These are two extremes that just are not realistic right. to me. Yeah. But, you know, so. If we have a tax system and we have income tax, how do we get out of that mentality of just tax the rich, which doesn't really work? How do we so-called either build well, a new system or fix the system? What we could do, there's a couple of things we could do. Uh, one is uh, if we were to take back the money creating authority, if Congress were to take that back, mm -hmm. the Constitution says Congress can coin money uh, and regulate the value thereof. That's mm -hmm. their responsibility. It's mm -hmm. not the responsibility of a private bank. Mm -hmm. uh, if they were to take that back and start issuing United States notes, that would save us $75 million an hour in interest that we get no benefit from. Because That's, you would you would not yeah. have to pay back yeah. Yeah. interest right. on, you okay. Wouldn't be pay, you'd have interest-free money. Okay. And uh, that's more than is collected in the uh, income tax plus the uh, gift and inheritance tax uh, and uh, so that would mean that Congress would then be free to repeal the income tax mm -hmm. and that would make this the largest tax haven in the world. Based and, just on income, that's not corporate right. taxes, that's just well, personal income tax yeah. so you would have and, to do and corporate if they tax. Could, if they could reduce corporate taxes Mm -hmm. and put tariffs back in place mm -hmm. so, that, so that it would be... More expensive to get things from other countries? Well, it, it would be, however, uh, it, would, it would make us able to compete with places that are, that are paying uh, $3 a day mm -hmm. in wages. Uh, yeah, slave labor. Very hard to, you know, and, and uh, children working in factories mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we could then be be able to compete with those other countries. Yeah, but the price of things would rise. I it mean, the would. corporate, I mean, yeah. if the corporate, or yeah. if mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. people have a philosophy that they don't have a wider mm -hmm. berth on how sure. they look at yeah. the money that they make sure. or the money that they need to make, okay? If that stays narrow to, I just want to prosper my stockholders or I, you know, mm -hmm. if that becomes too narrow, then you may loosen up other things, but you're gonna, aren't you still going to have that top-heavy, elitist kind of, a lot of people make a lot of money and the prices will rise well, I, type of I thing? Think, I think everyone would make money because uh, if you were a tax haven, investment would flock to this country, the jobs would come back to this country, because then there'd be an advantage to be here. Right now, we punish people that want to want to start a business in this country. But wouldn't, but wouldn't the people complain that they would have to still pay too much in labor? Because there's no way you're well, going to, even if we were tax saving, you're not going to get an American worker. I mean, with the society we live in, well, we can't live on $3 a day. No, no, I'm not saying we should. We should, we should continue with our standard of living, mm -hmm. which is now declining, but we, yes. should, we should go the other way. Right. Uh, if we had full employment, if, if the factories were all cranking out products mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and everyone had a job that wanted a job. Right. 
So you're saying it would balance itself out in time. Older, yeah. You know this what I mean? Would, yeah, okay. We would experience uh, wealth like, uh, like no other nation has ever known. We would experience prosperity that would be almost unbounded because every place else you go, you're at least punished to a certain degree with taxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and by eliminating or redu drastically reducing taxes, now if you have to have a tax uh, on the American people, right now we're taxing production. If you want less of something, you tax it. If mm -hmm. you want more of something, you don't tax it. Okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, so what do we want people to have less of? Well, uh, if we did have to have a tax, it would be better to have a tax on consumption. Okay. Because that encourages saving. Yeah. And people, you know, there are a lot of families that are just one or two paychecks away from being homeless. Yeah. And some of them are considered middle class. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they have to have that, that revenue or they don't have any reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we had full employment, uh, people would then have, if they weren't paying it out, Mm -hmm. uh, they could save more, they can invest more, mm -hmm. uh, they could give more to charities. Yeah, and they would spur the economy more sure. because yeah. they would just be more active in the whole attitude of everything. Yeah. Um, it's always an interesting conversation with you. Thank you so much. Oh, um, and just, I have to leave you oh, with sure. one thought. Please do. Uh, you know, different animals have, uh, if they're in a group, they're called uh, like a gaggle of geese, mm -hmm. uh, pride of lions, a dazzle of zebra, a crash of rhinoceros, a parliament of owls. What do you suppose a bunch of baboons are called? I have no idea. Well, you have to remember the baboon is the loudest, most uh, aggressive, most vicious, and least intelligent of all the primates. Mm -hmm. A bunch of baboons is called a congress. <laughs> <laughs> and you always leave me with something witty. Or you always leave my audience with something witty. Thank you so much, David. Well, we, we look forward to having you back again. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I am Ramona, and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.